Shades of Entrepreneurship, interviewing entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Born and raised in Portland, Oregon, my next guest is a former U.S. serviceman and veteran of Desert Storm, a graduate of Portland State University and serial entrepreneur. Please welcome the current owner and CEO of America Sandy Can, Jeremy Inman. All right, let's get into this. Jeremy, yes, welcome. Here thank we are. You. Thank you. Here we are. You're welcome. Thank you. Here we are. So thank you again very much for uh, joining the show this evening. Um, First, got a couple of questions, you know, kind of wanted to first just kind of start with an overview of your background. So you have been a small business owner for several small businesses in the past. So let's talk about those. Um, can you give me a quick just overview of some of the small businesses you've done? I know you've sold a couple and what you're doing today. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I right out of college, I, I worked for a couple of different companies, uh, mid-sized companies, um, and and they were uh, in the um, you know in the ATM industry, um, cash machines. You know this company, particular company I worked for. Uh, we just we processed ATM transactions and provided cash management and placed ATMs all over the country. And and it was you know it was a little bit by accident, obviously, how I got into that business. I didn't I didn't I didn't study it in school. And uh, my wife was a recruiter for a uh, staffing agency, and and I was looking for a job at the time. And went on an interview and they happened to hire me the next day and things kind of, kind of went from there. And, and I had an opportunity to, to move up in that, in that particular business pretty quickly. And a uh, couple years after I got there, the company sold to E-Trade, um, E-Trade, obviously the, the trading platform, yeah. public, publicly traded company. And, you know, I was extremely excited. I, I thought the, you know, the allure of working for a public company and, and a name like E-Trade, it was really the yeah. darling of the of the online investment world. And now, tell and, me when when about what time was this? That was in two thousand. Oh, so that was when the, the dot com. Do, oh, the dot com yeah. was booming. Everybody was making a killing, oh, yeah. uh, making hundreds of millions of dollars on companies that were losing money left and right. Oh, sounds and, like uh, today. Yeah, <laughs> sounds, that's sounds pretty like much. What about today? What do we like today? <laughs> yeah, that's that that's the cryptocurrency world. Uh, and so, um, you know, and. and you know, the particular company we're, we're working for E-Trade um, was, it was a fantastic organization, a lot of fun and great, great energy. And I, at the time I, I didn't have this itch to, Hey, I want to, you know, go, I want to go start my own company or be an entrepreneur. But, right. um, you know, I kind of, I felt like it, you know, maybe at some point in time in my life, I'd, I'd want to be a business owner. Right. I didn't know what that was. Gotcha. Uh, however, you know, we, we worked in that business with a lot of independent, we called them independent uh, distributors. Okay. And these were all obviously very small business owners and they, they, you know, they, they kind of created their own destiny. Right. And they were writing their own book and they were, they were doing well and, and making money. And, and, um, you know, as time grew on, I, I, I became, um, you know, kind of envious and, and curious about how they did it. And then nine 11 happened. Um, yeah. you know, that, that kind of, uh, that certainly changed the company I was working for uh, gotcha. quite a bit. They were based in Arlington, Virginia, uh, literally right across the river from the Pentagon. Oh, wow. And um, uh, that kind of triggered the organization to rein in a lot of the acquisitions that they had done over the, over the previous years. Gotcha. And so they, they started to shut down all their satellite offices, ours being one of them. Um, and you know, they, they offered several of us, um, jobs to, to move back to Arlington and, and, and work there. And, you know, frankly, you know, my wife and I at the time certainly gave it some thought, uh, and, you know, flew back to DC and spent a bunch of time there and, um, just kind of realized that's as, as kind of sexy as it sounded to live in DC and work there and the buzz of the East coast, um, you know, it just, it wasn't for me. Yeah. It was quality of life thing and, and the commute would have been rough and it's extremely expensive. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, my family's here, our family's here, my life is here and yeah. everything we do out here is just, um, 
Uh, it was a quality of life deal. So, yeah. so kind of opted out and we had a timeline to, to either find a new job or, or, or move on because they were shutting down our office here in Portland. Oh, and, wow. and, uh, you know, I took a, um, I took a job with a company cause I, you know, I had a, I had a, a, a small, we had an infant, uh, literally less than a year old. Um, and you know, I, I wasn't in a position to, I didn't have any money to go out and just start a company right. and do X, Y, and Z. So, uh, I took a job, but two guys I, I worked with at the company, we all got together one day and said, Hey, why don't we just go start our own ATM company? You know, okay. So nobody, you know, nobody had non-competes and, and, um, and which was, which was actually really fortunate for us at the time. And, and so, you know, over the next four months, that was in call it December, uh, from, you know, December of 2001 until, um, till March of 2002, we, we spent a time, you know, a bunch of time writing a business plan and, 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 you know, I, I didn't, I didn't know a ton about writing a business plan and going yeah. out and raising money. And I don't even know what this all means or how you go do it, but we all just kind of dove in. We had some former customers of ours, um, uh, people that we knew who, who were, had means and mm-hmm. had, a, had, had, um, you know, means to invest in small businesses. And so yeah. we just, we wrote a business plan and we sat down with them and just asked, yeah. you know, that that's how you do it. It's, it's, yeah. there's not a lot of beating around the bush when you're asking somebody for money and it's extremely humbling. Yeah. And, and so we spent, you know, we spent, we were pretty lucky at the time. Honestly, we had very, two very, very friendly customers who wanted to kind of keep this going and they understood the business and gotcha. they wanted to help us out. So, so, uh, in April, you know, April 1st, 2002, uh, we started Aptus Financial nice. and Aptus was, um, you know, it was an independent ATM operator. Uh, we started with, um, nothing, zero ATMs, zero customers. We got some capital from an investor and, uh, my two business partners and I, we decided, Hey, let's, let's, let's jump in. And we went and secured some office space and bought some yeah. computers and, took our, our sales staff from the, uh, from the previous company who are also all looking for, ju- for looking for jobs and yeah. started our company and, and dove in. That's incredible. And I think you highlighted a few things that are important for the listener, uh, at home. And one is when you're going out and trying to start a new company, right. And it, it's, it's okay to not know very much as far as the business plan goes, right. You can kind of learn that information, but one of the biggest things you mentioned mm-hmm. that is so important for a new entrepreneur is when you're going to gain capital and you're going to seek out your friends, your friends and family want you to succeed. Right. Yep. And oh, so yeah. they're, they're going to be there to help you. However, I, I, I got to ask how many times were you declined? Um, you know that the first time around for this particular business, because I've done this a few times mm-hmm. now, um, it was, we were very fortunate. Okay. We we're very fortunate. Okay. Uh, we, we had a particular, uh, customer again, who, who was quite well off and wanted us to succeed, um, and knew the industry really well and wanted to kind of be a part of what this was and, and knew that, you know, if we had an opportunity to, and if he could get in on the ground floor or something with a pretty, pretty nice, um, yeah. stake, uh, as a pretty nice stakeholder, um, you know, he, he stood to, to do pretty well out of the deal. Right. And, you know, we right. had good leadership. Uh, my, you know, our former CEO, um, was, uh, was one of the, you know, he was a, one of the founders and it was myself. And then, um, you know, our former head of sales. And so we all had specific roles and, you know, we were lucky, we were lucky cause it's not easy to raise money. And, yeah. you know, later yeah. in, as we, as we keep talking about, you know, the next couple businesses, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, um, yeah. Well, knock, how did, how do you, so one of the things you kind of mentioned is, is you had some experience, right. In, in this area, right. Yep. ATM, whatever, um, 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 processing ATM or, or creating, building out ATMs and selling them. So that right there is, is you're kind of looking at your value chain, right. Your, your supply chain. So you yep. kind of have a general idea of, of your supply chain management. Cause I think for a newer con, a entrepreneur going into something like that might be a little bit difficult, right. But since you had that background, did you feel that made it quite a bit easier to be successful in, in that in that kind of uh, 
industry? It, it, it did. Yeah. I mean, you know, we had, we had years of relationships already built with third party, um, financial transaction processors. Okay. We had, we had years of experience with a couple of different ATM manufacturers. Gotcha. We had experience with, um, you know, sponsor banks that, that you need to have that allow you to actually operate in the industry. And we had access to, um, you know, armored car relationships and oh, wow. banks that where we could, we could get vault cash and, 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 um, use that to load machines. So, we, 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 we were lucky in that. Well, not lucky. We worked, we worked hard in our previous, at our previous company right, to, right, to right. do, to do, um, uh, to, to build great relationships with all, with all of our suppliers. Um, you know, I'll talk about that a little bit. I, I always, I've always believed that your, your suppliers are your partners. Yeah. Um, very true. I, I, I never call them a vendor. Yeah. Um, oh, it's a, uh, they're your yeah. partners cause they, you know, they always help you succeed and, and you, you, everybody's going to succeed together. Um, you know, we took care of them, but they took care of us. And so we were, yeah. we had that infrastructure, you know, at least all those relationships established. So we, you know, we were able to leverage that quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, and obviously, um, things, you know, things kind of changed a little bit over time, but so, you know, so that, that organization we founded in 2002, um, and we ran it, um, and grew it both organically and through some merger and acquisition okay. uh, for 11 years. Wow. So, yeah. so you scaled it up, did some mergers and acquisitions. Yep. 11 years. Then, then what'd you guys do? 11 years uh, later in 2013, we sold the company to uh, one of uh, our largest competitors, um, which still to this day remains uh, actually the largest independent operator of ATMs in the world. Cardtronics, oh, wow. Cardtronics, based yeah. out of Houston, Texas. Um, they they actually started their company when we were right about the same time we all worked for E Trade, and okay. you know they had a little bit of a different business model. But um, a gentleman who started that company, his name was Ralph Clenard. Um, he brought his son in, Mike Clenard, um, two very very great gentlemen in the industry, great guys, great family family men. Um, I still remain friends with Mike Clenard nice. uh, to this day. We've, we've, um, we, we still talk a few times a year. And, and, um, and so, uh, when we were acquired by Cardtronics, I actually went to work for Mike. Oh, okay. Mike was the president of uh, North America at the time. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, it was actually a pretty exciting opportunity. I was, I was a little bit scared, um, when we first sold the company to, you know, cause I, I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen to, yeah. to Aptis, gotcha. uh, and our staff. Uh, I think oh, originally, yeah. um, they were, they were slotted to everything was kind of going to just get folded into Cardtronics and, and, and everybody was going to go away. Oh, interesting. Um, you know, I met with them and, and really convinced them that they were the right thing to do would be to actually keep everybody in place that we could. Yeah. Yeah, and, definitely. Um, you know, customers follow who they've been with. They follow yeah, relationships. Yep. Relationships are key. And so, um, myself and and the rest of our staff here in Portland ended up working for Cardtronics and and wow. and stayed here. And and uh, I went to work for um, uh, Mike Lenard and the you know, uh, president of North America. And then uh, a couple years later, uh, I took on a role as the managing director of Cardtronics Canada. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, all of this was, you know, the, the, the great thing about working for Cardtronics at the time was they recognized and the leadership there really recognized the, the companies that we were, that that they were acquiring were all very entrepreneurial. These were small businesses, folks that started, you know, from the ground up, built things up. And even though Cardtronics was a publicly traded company, um, you know, the value of this particular part of the business was really based on entrepreneurship. And gotcha. so we were fortunate enough to be able to kind of continue that entrepreneurial spirit and nice. run the business the way we, we wanted to be able to run the business. And, and, um, um, yeah, it was exciting. Nice. Exciting. Kind of like that corporate entrepreneurship kind of thing right there. Right. It, it, yeah, it, it awesome. was. Yeah. 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 Things, so, are, things are a little different today, but, um, yeah. um, yeah. So, 
That's the no. That's the ATM side of the business. I actually still own a, a small ATM company called oh, US um, US Automated Technologies. Okay, um, it's a small ATM portfolio, okay. and my company um, we process ATM transactions for um, about sixty to seventy different customers oh, in wow. the country. Yeah, that's incredible. Very and then, small. so so you eventually sold that company. Yep. Wouldn't work for the person you sold the company for. Yep. And then you continued to kind of have kind of a side hustle, right? With this, or did this, this other ATM position that, or this role, um, did you create it previously to uh, join another company or was it kind of a thing that you created afterwards? How did that come about? Yeah. So um, let's do a little bit of a rewind yeah. on just back in time. Yes. So in 2004, um, we were, uh, Aptis was running just fine. The, the, the ATM business was going well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the industry was, you know, the industry was struggling just, just a little bit because transaction volumes were declining and, okay. and, you know, there were some headwinds, um, you know, certainly in, in the industry. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we, we were, we were trying to grow both organically as well as through acquisition. Um, you know, but I saw, we, I started to see a little bit of a change in the industry. And, and part of that was, you know, what, what are we going to do to diversify? Oh, okay. And, okay. you know, when you look at, you know, just continuing to process ATM transactions, right. tra- transactions, and that's all that you do. Right. You know, the, right. the, the fear was that at what point in time is that going to dry up? Right. Gotcha. You, you know, with the, with the emergence of um, card acceptance and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, everybody, every, all the merchants around the country are taking cards and right. banks are issuing more cards and cash is becoming a little bit more of a, of a pain and the, yeah, the, definitely. the, the rise in, in surcharge fees from ATMs. And so, you know, we, I started to think to myself and that there, that, you know, if, if we want to survive, if, if Aptis really wants to grow and create, you know, additional value, cause we had shareholders at the time, um, you know, what are we going to do to increase value for our shareholders? And so we started to look at the prepaid world and the prepaid world to us was, you know, a few different things. It was, you know, uh, preloaded cards that you buy off, off the, off the, off the hook at the convenience store, Mm -hmm. or it was also, um, um, tying into payroll, being able to load cards onto payroll for people who normally gotcha. get paper gotcha. checks. Okay. Um, and then there was another avenue that we looked at that was kind of the college and university route, which was, hey, let's finally you know, find a way to get cards issued to uh, college students via oh. their their student ID. Oh, and so, um, you know, I, I started to write a business plan and with my, with at the time was with, with my boss at the time. Mm-hmm. And, and we wrote a business plan to, to really uh, take Aptis, not in a completely different direction, but in a, in a diversified direction to, yeah. to continue to create value for our shareholders and, and, <clears throat> and have something in addition to just processing ATM transactions. So we presented this to the board. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, at the time the, the board decided that they weren't, they weren't interested in that. They, they oh. wanted to, oh. you know, be yeah. laser focused on the ATM world and, gotcha. and that's what, they wanted to do. And, 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 um, you know, we asked them in a subsequent meeting, well, can, can we go do this right on the side? Do we have permission to go? Do we have permission to go do this on our own? And, you know, we'll hire somebody to do it, but you know, we think there's an opportunity here. So, um, we were granted that opportunity and, uh, that's when my partner and I went out and tried to raise money again. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I get it. Much harder this time. Yeah. 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 It was a lot harder. A newer concept. Yeah. Um, and you know, we, we didn't know what we didn't know about right. the industry. Right. We, we tried to do as much research as we possibly could. And, you know, again, leveraged a lot of the same relationships that right. we already had in the industry. Um, and after, uh, probably five or six months, uh, we, we were able to raise a little bit of money from a couple of, of again, very friendly investors, people that we knew. And, and they, they knew that what we had built already at Aptis and we're excited about di- uh, diversification and doing something yeah. different. And, and so we got a little bit of money from them and hired one particular, one person and opened up a little shop at a executive suite and, 
and uh, away we went. And it was uh, the name, name of that was TFG Card Solutions. Wow. And our focus at the time was really on kind of the three pronged um, um, prepaid approach. It was, you know, cards off the hook at the C store, the college and university play, and then this payroll thing that we weren't really sure about. Right, right. right. <laughs> but um, after about a year and a half, we we basically scrapped the the convenience store prepaid space. We okay. scrapped the the college and, and university uh, market, and we went all in on payroll. Gotcha. So our focus at the time from 2000, probably about 2006 um, and onward was getting uh, cards in the hands of the underbanked so that they can um, yeah. get away from paper checks and go yeah. to the check cashing store. That's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 So, so part, partnered with Visa and a couple of different other processing platforms and, um, you know, over, nice. over the next, um, well, 15 years, 14 years, um, built the company from, you know, one employee to almost over a hundred. Oh, wow. Wow. It sounds like in a very, what, what, 10 to 15 minute or 10 to 15 year, uh, time frame, you went from creating your first business plan to selling a company to starting a second company to, you know, yeah. you've, it's selling it again. It yeah. seemed to <laughs> kind of the trajectory. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about that, that the second venture, the second round of venture capitalists in a, in a new company, a new firm, right. Where you're kind of a new idea, right. Yeah. To, to these yeah. folks. Yeah. How did that go? And, and how, it sounds like it sounds like there were some uh, no's down oh, that road. Yeah, L- lots of no's for sure. Uh, it was it was certainly um, it was one of the most humbling experiences um, oh, yeah. you know I've ever had. And we it, we were you know we had a little bit of seed money, so we had you know enough. We had you know some of our own money in in it as well. And uh, you know it was trying to get meetings in downtown Portland with, with the Portland venture group oh, wow. uh, to which, yeah. which we got and completely crashed and burned. Oh, no. oh man, it was horrible. <laughs> it was, it was, it was one of the worst experiences ever. Um, only because we had, I, I, two of us had absolutely no business talking to private equity folks oh. and, 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 you know, venture capital guys who were asking a lot of questions that I, I didn't know the answers oh, to. Yeah. So um, it was, it was that, um, and again, we all learned, we all learned okay. what we didn't it's know and what we process. need to be better at Definitely to, you know, flying all over the country, trying to convince folks that this is, this is a great investment and they need to get in. And, and, wow. um, and, and again, a lot, a lot of no's, yeah. a lot of maybes, a lot of thanks for coming, um, uh, to flying all the way to New York, changing my clothes in the rental car bathroom because we took a red eye. Oh. And getting to our meeting only to find out that the guy we were meeting with um, uh, had to leave early because he was going to Vegas for a uh, oh. for a weekend with his buddies. Man, <laughs> so that is just a punch in the gut. It's just you know part of the deal. Yeah, it's, um, but you didn't give up. Never gave up. You kept you know? going. Kept See, going. That's, that's yep. kind of the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And that business was it was it was tough. It was really hard. I mean, yeah. there were there were there were. There were a couple of times in that business where we were not sure we were going to survive. Oh, long term. That's yeah. rough. Yep. We had to cut headcount. We we had to slash salaries. We had to Ugh. um um uh, and hope and give away more stock to to hope that people would stick around and and see the long term benefit. Wow. Um. There were friendships that were um jeopardized. Ugh, uh, that's but rough. Not, but not. Uh. But not not completely destroyed yeah. uh, through that whole process, but, um, but the, but we're put at risk and, you know, we were with, you know, with the, the belief that this was, this was going to make it um, from our, the, our president at the time. Um, he was so passionate about, about the product, mm-hmm. so passionate about the customer base, mm-hmm. so passionate about what we were doing. And we, and we all were, but he had a, he had a way of really keeping us so positive that this was going to yeah. work. And, and, uh, and he was right. And we were, you know, we, we, we never, we never didn't believe, 
But you know, when things aren't going well, you, oh, yeah. you, you have to be able to yeah. look at all sides. Definitely you do. You have to be, it's great to be optimistic. Um, and I'm, I'm a, I am an eternal optimist for sure. I like it. Uh, but, I like it. uh, but, but you gotta be able, you gotta be able to look at yeah. what the, what the risks are and the headwinds and be honest yeah. about what those headwinds are. Yeah. You know, when I, when I finished in my undergrad, you know, one of the, uh, things I stated and, you know, some of my buddies made fun of me for this quote, but, uh, you know, it never failed a day in my life. I either succeed or I learn. Yep. Right. Love that's, it. That, that's kind of the motto I live by because, Hey, if I'm going to, I'm going to learn something I might've maybe didn't succeed in what I was trying to do, but I didn't <laughs> fail either. Cause I'm not going to stop trying. Yeah. Right? Failure yep. to me is I'm done. I'm not trying anymore. I'm going to keep, keep grinding and, and keep moving forward. And that's, that seems what you, you know, you really have been doing now. You, you have this new company. Now you still own this company today. Is that nope. correct? Uh, we sold, so we, we sold that company in, uh, 2019. Okay. So just yep. recently. Yep. Yep. We had, um, it, it was time. Uh, there was a, okay. there was an opportunity and, and you know, where, where we were, um, you know, in the organization and, and how long we'd been in business. And we had, we had a, uh, a couple of outside investors. Okay. Uh, we had a private equity group that did injected some capital, um, in, I, I'm going to say 2016. Oh, okay. And so they're uh, chomping at the bits, yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it, you know, the great thing is they actually weren't really, oh, they, okay, they weren't nice. chomping at the bit. They, they, they were, they're not a buy and hold organization, but they, you know, they obviously want to realize their investment yep. at some point in time. And, yeah. and, you know, we saw that this was the right time to, to, to seek an exit. Okay. And that's kind of where the market was. Okay. And so, uh, we went out and, 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 uh, hired, hired a couple guys to an affirm to actually represent us. And oh, they, nice. they did that. So you didn't and, go back into the executive suites. No, no, it did not. <laughs> no, for sure. And we, uh, we went and, and, um, worked with them too. They found a buyer and, and nice. went through a kind of a competitive process and, okay. And yeah, we sold the company in 2019. Nice. And, you know, I think you also brought up something, um, very important for the listeners at home to understand too, is a lot of the times when you're, when you're seeking you know, additional capital, right. From venture capitalists, they kind of want that money back. Yep. Right. And they're going to want it at a, at a certain time frame. And, and you, you mentioned, you know, they're, these venture capitalist companies aren't necessarily a, a, a buy and hold. They're not necessarily investing in your company to, for the long game. They, they kind of want a return on their investment at some point. And so that's, that's a great kind of thing for the listeners at home to be mindful of when you're going out, you have, you have, different avenues, right. Of sources of, 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 uh, capital, right. You have your friends and family. They don't, they're probably not going to want to sell your company in, in a five year period. Venture capitalists might, you know, so just make sure you do your due diligence when you're, when you're out there with your folks. But so now that you sold your, sold the second company. Yep. Now what are we doing? So in, uh, the spring of 2019, um, well in 2017, the spring of 2017, I actually left Cardtronics and it was, it was time to move on. And I knew so you were, you own the second company <clears throat> while you're still working at Cardtronics. So yes, okay. yes, yes, Perfect. I did. I, I was not employed by the second company. Gotcha. I was, I sat on the board and, and as a co-founder, I was, gotcha. uh, yeah, well, I wasn't working there. Gotcha. Um, so, and I had our, you know, we had a, a management team and, and Perfect. employees who were really running everything. And obviously we would have a board meeting once a quarter and that whole process. Um, but I left, uh, Cardtronics in the spring of 2017. Um, it was, it was time to move on. And, and, and I was, I was really, really at that point excited to go pursue working for myself and, and owning my own company. Okay. And, um, you know, even though, I you know, started a couple of companies historically, you know, I also had partners and, and we had guidance and, you know, there was people, certain people around us to, to help. And, and I, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of do my own thing. And it was, yeah. um, so I, I spent the next year and a half or so looking at a, several different opportunities from, you know, buying a franchise to, to starting my own business from the ground up again. So you kind of had and, the itch. <clears throat> I had the itch. You had the itch. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I went and I, you know, I am not a, um, you know, I'm not a, hey, uh, put a giant check in my account and and go and go sit around and, and do nothing. 
Okay. I, I wanted, I always, I like to work. I love to work. Keeps the mind going. Yeah. Um, it keeps yeah. me excited about getting up every day. And, and so, so after about a year and a half, uh, you know, I had, after looking at a bunch of different opportunities, uh, I got a call from a friend of mine who, who, um, who's a friend of his father-in-law was selling his business. And, okay. Um, and it was a porta potty company and, all right. I kind of chuckled and then I, I, I got serious for, for, for a few seconds. I'm like, wait a second, this sounds fantastic. Well, why is he selling? And he's yeah, like, well, yeah. he just wants to retire. And, and, uh, I was like, well, does he have any family? Well, family doesn't want anything to do with it. I'm like, okay, well, God, okay. this is actually great. Let's, let's go take a look. So, yeah. so went and took a look and, and met with the owner and, and we, we, we struck up a great relationship and, 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 uh, ended up buying the company in, um, and actually sealed the deal, uh, on April 1st, 2019. Oh, wow. All so, right. um, since April 1st, 2019 to present, I'm the owner and CEO of American Santa can. We are a, um, portable restroom company here based in Portland, Oregon. And, nice. and we have about, uh, we have about 1800 porta potties and wow. sinks and, that's Other a lot equipment. of shitters. That, that's a lot of shitters, that's dude. A lot. That's a lot of shitters. Yeah, number we started, one in the number two business. That's right. We started. Uh, we started with just just about a thousand, and we've 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 grown. Uh, we've almost doubled in two years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so you're a serial entrepreneur. You, yeah. You have a lot of experience in this, um, and and a lot of you diverse experience, right? They're, yeah. They're, they're, your small businesses have been pretty uh, unique, uh, to say the least. Now. In your own words, how do you define success? Like a small business owner, an entrepreneur, how do you, I think some people are always very monetary about it, right? You have to, but how do you define the success? Oh man. Um, I think, uh, honestly, I, I define success a couple of different ways. One, okay. you get up and you love going to work every single day. Yeah. There you go. That's, 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 that's a career, success. baby. That's, ex- that's, that's a career, success, not a right job. There. Yeah, that's a, that's a success right there. Two, you have um, you, you have you have staff and management and employees that that stick around. Oh, okay, and we have been really lucky. Yeah, been really, really lucky. Um, you know, being a good. You know, I don't consider myself any. I don't. Sure, you can call me the owner of the business. That's great, but. You know, I, I, you know, leadership is, is being able to retain mm. your employees, mm-hmm. be able to provide them yep. an opportunity to, to, um, to provide for their family. Yeah. Yep. Get to work every day and work really hard. Yeah. And, and, and they enjoy what they do and take care of them. Definitely. That to me, that to me is, is success. Yeah. They yeah. Hey, employees. Yeah. I mean, the the financial stuff will come, will, will come along with it. Exactly. And, 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 um, you know, that, that, that's obviously a benefit and we're, we are, we are very fortunate to be in a position that we are. Yeah. Um, it's uh, great. You know, I also, you know, I, my, I, I focus more on, you know, how can I get my employees what they need before mm. what I get what I need? That's great. Yeah. You know, it's employees that want to feel cared for and about, right? Yeah. Yep. They, they want to feel cared for and about, and that's, it seems like that's exactly what you're doing. So that's a phenomenal job. Now, what has been one of the most satisfying moments in business for you? Man. Um, probably the day that we opened our first business. Yeah. Aptus Financial. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nothing to kind of most- compete with that kind of like, I mean, you know, it's, you know, when you sell a business that that's obviously it's exciting. And, yeah. and, you know, the, you've, 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 you've reached, there's a, there's a financial, um, you know, um, story you can tell there as well, but, but the, right. it's, it's the starting of it. And actually, yeah. you know, you sign the lease, you move in, you turn your computer on and the phones work and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh man. It's probably a good feeling. It's, it's a good feeling. It's, yeah. it's, that's, it's extremely satisfying. You're, and you're, and yeah, you're working, yeah. you're working hard and you're, you're grinding things out to, to get the customer and, and, and make the business work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I, I kind of would equate that. So for the listeners at home that maybe have not owned a small business, 
but maybe you've owned a house before, or maybe you've owned a car or, you know, even if you owned a new electronic, like a new laptop and they fired up for that first time. Yeah. You'll always remember that first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Just, absolutely. Yep. So what, what is your, and you've been doing this for years, um, you know, what, over 25 years or so, right? Yeah. Almost 25 years. Wow. Yep. So what is yep. your favorite part of being an entrepreneur? What do you love most about it? Man, you know what? Um, I love creating. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, we've, we've, we've been, um, um, you know, having ideas and, 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 you know, being able to, you know, have, it's, it's the opportunity to, to dream about something and put your thoughts and dreams to paper. Yeah. Yep. And, and, um, knowing that I can go do this. Nice. I can go do this. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the, you know, an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, you know, there's, there's a difference between an entrepreneur and having an entrepreneurial spirit and mm. being, yes. being self-employed or being a business yes. owner, right? Yes. So you can still be, I mean, you, you can still be an entrepreneur and entrepreneurial and still work for a big company, yep. right? And, yes, you and, can. And, and it's, yeah. um, um, you know, a lot of, you know, hopefully at some point in time, that entrepreneurial spirit will be, yep. will be recognized and be able to be taken advantage of and, and be able to go, to go do something with that. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, 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 you know, having the ability and to create and go execute on that. And, 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 uh, frankly, having the support system around you Mm. that allows you mm. to, to be able to go realize that entrepreneurial yes. spirit. That's, and I, that's I'm very big. fortunate that I have a family and my better half, my wife has been extremely yes. supportive. I, we would, I would not be here without her. That's, that's huge. I think that's a big important piece too, is, is having the support staff around you and so, you know, you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. You know, and so making yeah. sure that you surround yourself with positive like people that are going to continue to push you to be your better self every yeah. day. Yeah. Right now, yeah. it sounds like you, you, you've been doing very well. You're successful. So there has to be a successful formula. What, what's the entrepreneur successful formula? Is there one? Tell the listeners at home. Ask a lot of questions of, of, of people that you respect around you. Okay. Get advice. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, listen to that advice. Mm. You don't always have to necessarily take that advice, (laughs) but, but, but ask, ask, ask a lot of questions and surround yourself with good people. Yeah. Um, be humble because it's okay to be humble. Yes. And, and, and tell your story. Mm. There's nothing better about, Mm being able to tell your story yep. and, and, and it doesn't mean you're asking for something. It just means y- you, you want to tell the story. What, what are you doing? Hey, here's, yeah. here's my, and, and, and networking. Oh, you know, there's, 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 that's there's, a big it's, one. It's big. It's that's big. A big one. It's, 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 it's really important to network, not only in your business community, but it's extremely important to network in your industry. Know mm. your competitors, mm. know your, know your partners out there. And, and, um, and it's okay to, and, and you know what? And learn something every day. Learn I, I, I still, I still learn something every day. Trust yeah. me. I mean, I make mistakes probably every single day. Oh yeah. And I, my, and my wife tells me to this great. day, I make mistakes every single day. Yes. So I we mean, do. she reminds me of that. <laughs> <laughs> so looking back 25 years, yeah. what advice would you give a younger Jeremy today? Oh, um, if you want to go do something, go find a way to do it. Seriously. It's, there is, there is, um, uh, don't take no, don't take no, don't take no for an answer. That is great advice. And, and, and keep asking questions and find a way to find a way to learn something every day. And you got to be willing. If you're going to ask somebody to do something, you got to be willing to go do yourself. Man, that's a leader right there. You're going to ask somebody to do something. 
you better be willing to get down on hands and knees and scrub just next to them, right? Yep, absolutely. Right next to them. It's yep. that's such an important thing. Yeah, get your hands dirty, and you know, there's there's going to be a time to delegate and all that yeah, other definitely. kind of stuff down the road. But but find a way to get your hands dirty and 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 know know everything. Find a way to know everything about your business. Yeah, yeah. I was very I was very fortunate. I was I was surrounded by a lot of very smart people who who I, you know, I think saw, saw potential in me mm-hmm. and I, I worked hard for it. But I, and I also, I put my out there, I put myself out there. You know, I asked when I worked for larger companies, I continued to ask for more opportunities and more okay. responsibility. And I was fortunate enough that they, that they did that. And, and that helped me learn an amazing amount. And, yeah. um, and that helped me become, you know, really who I am today. And I run that my business that way. And, um, take care of your employees. Great advice. Yeah. It's great advice. So again, folks at home, it's okay to ask the worst they're going to say is no. Right. Like yep. you, you've, you've, they've said no to you before. Yep. Right. That's yeah. the worst they can do. Yeah. Jeremy, thank you again so much for joining us today. Thank you for the listeners at home. For those that are interested, please visit us at theshadesofe.com. Thank you and good night.